Welcome to the Eclipse TCA 1v1 tier list for patch 0.6522, I think. Today we're going to be taking a look at what stands are good, what stands are bad, what you want to use, what you want to stay away from, and why. That being said, I have to get two things out of the way. Number one is that I already know that some things are going to change. So I'm trying to sort of tailor the tier list around the fact that some things balance wise are going to get shifted a little bit, but I don't think any of those things are going to gut any of the stands in question. So I think we should be all right on that front. And the other thing is that we're specifically talking about 1v1s here. I'm not considering main game or any future team modes. This is just one-on-one -on -one encounters, what stands are good, what stands are bad. Anyways, we're going to start things off with the worthless tier. And the worthless tier only has two stands in it. Those stands are Killer Queen and Weather Report. Not that one. This one. Killer Queen, I made an entire video about why it was garbage and not worth using whatsoever. Hopefully, stuff like that gets changed. But at least from my knowledge right now, that's not happening. So as it stands, Killer Queen is completely useless and you should totally stay away from it. Now, as for Weather Report, this stand is worthless not because it's horribly bad, although it's not very good to be perfectly honest, but mainly because weather report heavy weather exists, which is literally just weather report, but upgraded. It is the same stand with more moves and I think higher destructive power. So there's no reason to use this under any circumstances, just don't. But with worthless tier out of the way, we're gonna move forward with the good tier and there really aren't too many stands in here. We're gonna start off with White Snake though. Now, the thing about White Snake is that it's not phenomenally good, even though on paper it looks like it should be phenomenally good. I mean, for God's sakes, it has an uncancelable, unparryable, block breaking stun. That's insanity. But once you figure out that you can just barrage back against this and basically remove any chance that they get any hits outside of the initial hit and then maybe a slight follow-up, this stand just sort of tanks itself. That and you'd initially think that losing your stand in a 1v1 would be a really bad thing. But since it ragdolls you, and you can pretty easily just run away since White Snake doesn't have any moves to catch up with you, yeah, you can basically just run away the entire time until your stand comes back. Not only that, but it almost sort of hurts you because while the person is running away from you when they don't have their stand, their cooldowns are coming back. So you don't get damage, they get their cooldowns back and sort of a, a reset in the match. The fact that it has no mobility moves whatsoever to catch someone is probably the biggest thing that hurts it. But generally speaking, it has some great combo tools, you just don't get to use them very often. It's not bad, but it's also not great. Next in the good tier is going to be the hand. You know, I initially thought that gold experience was the most underrated stand in the game, but after using the hand, I think it's probably this. The only difference between gold experience and the hand is that the hand is significantly worse than gold experience. That being said, the hand is by no rights bad. I mean, for God's sakes, it's got a move that deals like 80 damage in one hit. So that in of itself is good. But I think the real thing that helps the hand a lot is just how good Erasure Pull is. This move comes out quickly, and unless you're directly anticipating it, which if you're fighting the hand, you should be, but regardless, it's really easy to land and immediately opens you up to winning an engagement right off the bat by just pressing one button. You don't even really need to aim with it either. This move is just incredibly good. The kick barrage is kind of weak, ground erasure just sucks, but even still, the hand is not horrible. It's just all right. Moving forward, and of course the controversial one that people wanted me to put in worthless tier, but I won't do it. And that's six pistols. Now don't get me wrong, this is definitely the worst stand in good tier. But the problem is that it's just not on the same level of worthless as Killer Queen or Weather Report is, by any rights. It's not like this stand isn't capable of doing anything, and there are some changes coming to it again for like the fifth time that should help it a little bit more to compete. Fact of the matter is, if you know what you're doing with six pistols, you can be a real pain in the ass, and you can absolutely win games. This whole slander that Six Pistols is totally useless and just the worst stand in the game, those people need to go use Killer Queen for a bit. Because 
at least with six pistols, if you're winning, you can finish people off and they don't just run away for an eternity. You pair that with kick being almost instant and impossible to react to, which makes you able to reload and set up anytime you want. And the fact that place pistols in general is just a really good move that basically carries the whole stand. And yeah, six pistols isn't phenomenal, but it's definitely not worthless. I told you that the good tier was gonna be small and I wasn't lying. That's the end of good tier. Now we're moving up to the heavy hitters. These are the great stands. First up is probably the lowest on here, and that's Star Platinum. Star Platinum's in a bit of a weird spot because I initially thought that this stand was really, really good. And then after using it a little bit, I realized it's not quite as good as I thought it was, but it's still a very solid stand. Star Platinum's main problem is that two of its moves are basically entirely limited to getting block breaks, and if you're not getting block breaks and you're throwing these out raw, it's pretty unlikely you're going to land them. It's not impossible, and if you're playing well, you can make it work, but generally speaking, with Star Platinum, you've got Starfinger, you've got Kick Barrage, and that's it. Now mind you, you've also got a time skip, a time stop, and a stand jump, which are all good utility moves, and basically the reason that this stand is in great tier. But regardless, Star Platinum kind of struggles on the move front, but it's made up for by its high destructive power. And of course, if you're able to get those block breaks, you've got a 70 damage beatdown and a 60 damage pseudo beatdown, which is a lot of damage. So yeah, Star Platinum, it's great. Moving forward and on the same type of stand, we've got the world. The world is slept on because lots of people just use it to get the world over heaven and then they ditch the stand but the world right now is actually in a pretty good spot. I think the only thing it's missing is Destructive Power 5, considering it's the same type of stand as Star Platinum, so it should probably do similar damage. But other than that, the world's kit is super solid. Unlike Star Platinum, you have knives, which have a really low cooldown, can potentially set up for a lot, and generally do a fair amount of damage. The only problem with knives, of course, being if your opponent knows how to block them and reads when you're trying to use these consistently, they can basically get completely written off and you'll never get anything off of them. Which makes the stand sort of bipolar and the reason that it's in great instead of top tier. That being said, the world also has a stand jump and a time skip, as well as a time stop, like we talked about with Star Platinum, all great moves. And it's also got a kick barrage, which true combos off of knives and does like 45 damage. And then of course to top it off, you've got Road Roller, which is a beatdown that does 60 damage. So just generally, the world is very good. Now we move on to that slept on stand I was talking about earlier, Gold Experience. Holy goddamn is this thing annoying, and well, for good reason, because it's real good. When you combine multiple damage reflection moves with a self heal, a true uncancelable block break, and two uncancelable moves that are blockable so you can barely punish them, and if you get hit by them, they can do a boatload of damage, you've got Gold Experience. Barely anybody's using this stand, and uh, not entirely sure why, because it's very, very strong. Literally the only ability that Gold Experience has that's just kind of all right and not really good is your Root Bullet. That's the only move in 1v1s that's kind of mediocre, but everything else you have, which I think is like six moves, is good. And having six moves that are all good, yeah, that's gonna help you a lot. So Gold Experience, absolutely deserving of great tier. Next up is Weather Report Heavy Weather, which might be a little bit controversial. I've seen a lot of rumblings that Weather Report Heavy Weather got gutted. It's worthless now. It has no place in the game. It's really bad. Yada, 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 yada. You're wrong. I heavily disagree. I think Weather Report Heavy Weather is still a really good stand. Because, I mean, guess what? They patched out the 100 HP auto combo and then increased the damage on Tornado which makes it still a 100 HP auto combo. So uh, nothing changed on that front. Rainbows are a fair bit weaker, but rainbows were a load of BS before. So, you know, those are still good. And I think the thing that a lot of people don't consider about Weather Report Heavy Weather is that it does a lot of damage. Like seriously, this is a destructive power four stand. That puts it on par with the world. So in your just general exchanges, you're doing good damage. And at the end of the day, that's usually what matters. When you pair high destructive power with a good move set, you get a good stand. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. I think what it comes down to is a lot of people didn't want to change up their play styles. They just assumed these nerfs make this stand useless and they wrote it off. 
but I really don't think so. I think Weather Report Heavy Weather is a generally great stand. Moving forward, next up is the World Over Heaven. This is one of those stands where I've been really torn on it recently, and I just can't quite tell if it belongs in top tier or great tier. And I think at the end of the day, it's gonna have to be put into great tier. The main problem with the World Over Heaven is that it just doesn't have a whole lot of moves, which means you're almost entirely relying on M1s a lot of the time. That's not all bad because, fun fact, the World Over Heaven has the fastest M1s in the game, and the fact that it has really high destructive power helps, but at the end of the day, basically all you have access to with the World Over Heaven is Knives and Smite. Those are the two moves that you're going to be reliably able to land. Because Reality Overwrite's cool and all, but you're never going to get that unless you land a block break. Time Stop's cool and all, but again, not going to be able to land it without a block break. And with how slow it is, it's the easiest to cancel in the entire game. Your self-heal is super nifty, but it replaces having an actual combat move. So again, you're relegated to M1s, Knives, and Smite, which has a really long cooldown. Overall, I think that the World Over Heaven is really good, but it's just not quite on the same level as a lot of the top tier stands in the game. And thus we move on to the last stand in great tier, and that is Seamoon. Seamoon is one of those stands that you barely see. You just see nobody using it. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is, because Seamoon is stupid good. I'm just gonna come out and say it, Seamoon might have the best ultimate in the entire game, and that's gonna be pretty controversial when ultimates like the World Over Heaven's Time Stop and Made in Heaven's Time Acceleration exist. But seriously, Gravity Shift is insanely powerful. Step one is landing the move, which, fun fact, if you're using Brick Battle, can be true comboed off of Sword Slice if you time it right. And because it's uncancelable, it's not like they can barrage you to stop it either. If you land the move, you go faster, you jump higher, and they go slower. If you've played any 3D fighting game, especially on Roblox, you'll understand just how important move speed is. And so speeding up you and slowing down them is almost a death sentence for anyone who gets hit by this. It is very difficult to play when you're as slow as Gravity Shift makes you. And that's just the ultimate. The stand itself is good. It's got good destructive power. It's got its inversion passive, which is super solid. And on top of that, it has an 80 damage beatdown like move. Yeah, that's right, Hard Inversion does 80 damage. That's the same amount of damage as Starpod in the world's beatdown. You combine that with an uncancelable AoE stun? Yeah, Seamoon's real good. But Seamoon is not as good as these next stands. And we're gonna start with Crazy Diamond. Crazy Diamond is the most hilarious top tier stand I think I've seen in any Roblox JoJo game I've ever played because it's just so comically simple and yet it's colossally broken. <laughs> it's really messed up. Crazy Diamond basically has three moves. It's got Bearing Shot, it's got your Rock Trap, and it's got Army Knife Impale. And those three moves carry the entire stand to top tier. And that's insane. Rock Trap is a large AoE blockable stun that has a way lower cooldown than it probably should. If you land the move, it puts the opponent stuck in place for an eternity. And it also directly true combos into Army Knife Impale, which does over 40 damage, stuns, and combo extends itself. So you can combo extend them while they're stuck in the Rock Trap. Not only that, but if they want to block in the Rock Trap, guess what? You've got Bearing Shot, which is a true block break. Or at least just about. It will be soon. Spoiler alert. If you don't have arm strength three right now, it'll break your block, and later it will just break your block. On top of having stand jump in order to catch people, a counter which removes the usage of certain moves from people's kits if you're being smart about it, that increases your damage resistance and increases your damage dealt, as well as wall creation, which surprisingly can be super helpful, especially trying to heal after you take a stock where you can put it down and then the opponent can't throw projectiles at you. Generally speaking, Crazy Diamond is just a crazy strong stand, pun intended, and I have no idea how it's so good for how little moves it has. On the complete opposite end of that spectrum, uh, welcome to King Crimson. King Crimson works off of the exact opposite that Crazy Diamond is. With Crazy Diamond, you've got barely any moves and yet it's incredibly strong. And with King Crimson, you have a ridiculous amount of moves, and that's why it's so good. With King Crimson, you have a basically frame one combo breaker slash combo ender in King Strike. You've got an unlimited pressure tool with a raced attack that can easily set up into block breaks. You've got an uncancelable stun in Chop. 
You've got a true block break, which is insane with eye jab. And finally, you have Impale, which is a 40 damage combo ender that comes out faster than beatdown. All that for your attacking moves, and then you can't forget about utilities. Time Erase, if used properly, is all but a guaranteed combo starter. Time Skip is of course the best movement ability in the game. And finally, Epitaph is the best counter in the game. If you land it, it instantly gives you a combo, on top of the fact that it basically just makes you invincible for a few seconds. You can do whatever you want, and if the opponent tries to punish it, well, they get hurt for it. Generally, King Crimson, I feel like you just push buttons and you win. And that in of itself is crazy good. On the topic of pushing buttons to win, hello, Made in Heaven. I mean it. With Made in Heaven, you can literally just push buttons and you'll probably win. This stand is absolutely out of this world. And I talked about how ridiculous it was in my stand review, and I still don't really see very many people using it to its fullest potential. Knives come out stupid quick, are really, really good, and confirm every single move except for the auto track that I can't remember what it's called. You can throw knives at somebody, true combo it into Heaven's Judgment, and then true combo your speed slice after that. That's free damage, completely free. You need to do nothing for that. And then you top it off by the fact that knives have basically no cooldown, and Speed Slice basically has no cooldown. And we haven't even talked about the fact that Time Acceleration is almost a guaranteed half of someone's health if you use it properly. Made in Heaven certainly isn't the most underutilized stand in the game. I see a lot of them. But I think it is one of the most underdeveloped. Or not necessarily underdeveloped, but more so it's been developed. People just don't use it properly? I, I don't even know. Made in Heaven's insane, and it deserves to be in top tier. And the final stand on here, you already see it, you know what it has to be, it's Star Platinum The World. This stand has basically taken the game by storm after it got buffed into oblivion. Now some of the stuff that Star Platinum The World has is getting nerfed, thankfully, because this stand is just incredibly frustrating to deal with right now. But at least in its current state, Star Platinum of the World has a stupidly spammable time stop that guarantees damage against any stand that doesn't have time stop resistance every time it's off cooldown. Arm Jab is an uncancelable combo starter that's also a combo breaker since it comes out immediately. Bearing Shot we almost already talked about with Crazy Diamond, but I mean, it's a block breaking projectile. That in of itself is crazy, and it doesn't ragdoll, so it combo extends. Right now, it combo extends into beatdown. Why? It won't, but it does right now. Why? Speaking of comboing into B-Town, it's also got a counter. And guess what? The counter confirms into B-Town. Of course it does. Why? Admittedly, Speed Blitz is kind of a bad move, but it's made up for by everything else Starplot in the world has. High destructive power, crazy strong tools, a stupid time stop, an incredibly good time skip, and a beatdown that does 80 damage, so if you get a block break or manage to catch someone off guard, yeah, kiss goodbye to 80 of your health, it's gone. Star Platinum the World is insane, and that's why it is our last stand in top tier. Now of course that's gonna be wrapping up the tier list, I've ranked everything. I think there's a lot of things on here that are gonna be very controversial, so just remember that this is my opinion, and also, I'm not the direct authority on everything. Some of these things are definitely subject to change as I play them more, but I do have a pretty good track record of playing every stand in the game at this point, so generally speaking I know what everything is capable of. Again though, you don't have to agree with everything I had to say in this video. And on that topic, what do you disagree with? Or what do you agree with? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below because I'll be curious to see exactly how my tier list stacks up to how other people feel about the game. Anyways, I'm wrapping up here. I don't have anything else to say. So if you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like, subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you next time.